When it comes to American muscle cars, there's one name that stands above the rest, the Chevrolet Corvette. With a history as rich and varied as the car itself, the Corvette has seen it all. From the original narrow-bodied C1 to the modern mid-engine beast that is the Z06, the VET has evolved in ways that most cars can only dream of. But among the eight generations spanning 70 years, one Corvette stands out as the ultimate unicorn. The 1967 L88 Corvette, a car so legendary that even today, it makes $200,000 resto mod owners green with envy. To truly appreciate the L88, you've got to understand the car it was built upon. The C2 generation of Corvettes, produced from 1963 to 1967, this was the era when the Corvette came of age. Gone were the days of the narrow-bodied C1. The C2 was a different beast altogether. It was low, wide, and mean, with a shark-like appearance that made it look ready to pounce, especially with the bumpers removed. This wasn't just a pretty face, though. The C2 was designed from the ground up to harness the power of a V8 engine, and it featured independent rear suspension an innovation that gave it handling capabilities that muscle cars of the time could only dream of. But as impressive as the standard C2 Corvette was, Chevy had something even more special up its sleeve, a secret weapon that would go down in history. Enter the 1967 L88 Corvette, a car so rare and powerful that it quickly became the stuff of legend. At first glance, it might look like just another 67 Corvette, but under the hood, this thing was a monster. Chevrolet took the already impressive C2 platform and turned it into a track-ready machine that could smoke the competition. What made the L88 so special? It started with the engine, a 427 cubic inch V8 that officially produced 430 horsepower. But here's the kicker. Chevrolet was lowballing those numbers. In reality, the L88 was pushing closer to 560 horsepower, making it one of the fastest production cars in the world at the time. And Chevy didn't just stop at the engine. The L88 was stripped down for pure performance. It came without a radio, without air conditioning, and even without a heater. Why? Because the L88 wasn't meant for cruising. It was built to win races. This car was all business. Part of what makes the 1967 L88 Corvette so legendary is the mystery that surrounds it. Chevrolet never advertised the L88 to the general public. In fact, they did the opposite. They actively discouraged customers from buying it. Chevy didn't want weekend warriors driving this beast to the grocery store. The L88 was a factory race car, and only serious racers need apply. Because of this, only 20 L88 Corvettes were ever built in 1967, making it one of the rarest Corvettes ever produced. And for those lucky enough to get their hands on one, the L88 was nothing short of a revelation. On the track, it was a force to be reckoned with, easily outpacing the competition and securing its place in automotive history. Enter the big blocks the 396 and the 427 cubic inch monsters that pushed the Corvette's power to new heights. With these engines, the horsepower jumped to well over 400, with the most powerful versions reaching around 420 to 430 horsepower. These big block Corvettes weren't just fast, they were borderline terrifying. We're talking about cars that could hit 12 second quarter mile times, leaving tire smoke and shocked faces in their wake. Now, if you think those regular 427 big block Corvettes were impressive, wait until you hear about the L88. Yes, the L88 used a 427 big block, but it was far from your run of the mill engine. While the standard 427 powered Corvettes were already dominating the streets, the L88 took things to a completely different level. General Motors officially rated the L88's 427 cubic inch big block at 430 horsepower. But here's the thing. GM was seriously downplaying those numbers. On paper, it didn't seem all that different from the other 427s, but in reality, it was a whole different animal. 
When car enthusiasts started putting these L88s on a dynamometer, they quickly realized GM had been a little, shall we say, conservative with their figures. The L88 wasn't just packing 430 horsepower, it was pushing closer to 560 horsepower. That's a massive jump from what GM was claiming. So why did GM understate the L88's power so drastically? Well, there are a couple of theories. One of the most popular is that GM did it to deter regular customers from buying them. See, back then, insurance rates for high-performance cars were through the roof, and the higher the horsepower, the higher your premium. By underrating the L88, GM made it seem less powerful, and therefore less expensive to insure, than it actually was. Another reason might have been to keep the L88 out of the hands of anyone who wasn't planning to race it. The L88 was designed for the track, not for the Sunday drive to the grocery store. On paper, the L88 didn't look all that different from other 427 Corvettes. But those in the know understood that this was a very special machine. GM's strategy worked like a charm. Only a select few buyers, usually hardcore racing enthusiasts, ended up getting their hands on the L88. And those who did were treated to a car that was unlike anything else on the road. The L88 wasn't just fast, it was blindingly quick, and it required serious skill to handle. This car was a handful in the best way possible, with raw power that could overwhelm even the most seasoned driver if they weren't careful. The L88 wasn't for just anyone. General Motors made sure of that. They wanted the L88 in the hands of drivers who could fully unleash its monstrous potential. We're talking about a car that was so extreme, it's amazing it was even street legal. The engine in the L88 was nothing short of savage, pure, unfiltered power. To even start, you needed to run 103 octane gas, which is basically race fuel. The engine had a 12.5.1 compression ratio, forged rods, forged pistons, hardened push rods, and a high lift camshaft that made it borderline undrivable on the street. And let's not forget the 850 CFM four barrel carburetor and factory aluminum heads. This wasn't just an engine. It was a piece of racing machinery squeezed into a Corvette's body. Let's talk about the transmission. The L88 came standard with the M22 Rock Crusher for speed transmission. If you're not familiar, the M22 earned its nickname because of its distinct loud whine, thanks to the straighter cut gears inside. This wasn't just any gearbox, it was a transmission built to handle the massive torque of the L88 engine. When you drove this thing, you knew you were in something special. The power was sent to the rear wheels through a pause traction rear end with drag-focused 4.56 gears, which meant this car could launch like a rocket. Chevy only produced the L88 from 1967 to 1969, and in that time they built just 216 of these machines. That makes the L88 one of the rarest and most sought-after Corvettes ever. But its rarity isn't just about the numbers, it's about what this car represented. The L88 was the ultimate expression of what a Corvette could be, a no-compromise, high-performance machine that was as close to a race car as you could get with a license plate. Thanks for watching. Please like the video press, the subscribe button, and also drop your thoughts in the comments section.